Hi, uh, Dane with STM Fabrication. Uh, we're going to do a quick installation video. Uh, we've done a cutout to show you where things go and I think how they uh, how they'll work quite easily. Uh, a few little things over the years that uh, you have to listen a little bit more carefully as opposed to taking the time to be doing every step. Uh, I'm not very good at these videos. <laughs> And uh, I'm a lot better at putting things together and designing things, fortunately. Uh, anyway, uh, listen as well as, as watch. We're going to make this as, as quick as possible. We've got all the components that you need to install the Gentle Breeze, the, uh, the efficient system that we, uh, we produce down here in Newburgh, uh, outside of Georgia. Everything from the wire nuts to the ground wire crimps to the duct tape, the silver duct tape, uh, and we've assembled as much as possible uh, coming out of the box, as it were, for you. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is find a power source. Right? Uh, what I recommend is a power source on the wall, in either side of the wall, in your hall. Right, where you're going to install the intake. Try to find something close. Right. We've got 25 foot of power cord on the motor unit itself, all right, which is pre-assembled. Right. Center line, constant 110, not a switched out one. Right. Before you turn the power off, if you're working alone, all right, plug a radio into it, then go find your panel, service panel circuit breaker box, all right, <laughs> or fuse box, turn the radio up loud so you can hear it, off and on with the circuit breakers if they're not labeled, chances are they're not labeled, okay. uh, as soon as the power's off, make sure nobody's around that can turn that power on while you're working on this, okay. anyway, after that, you're done with power, Take a center line on your uh, on the ceiling. It doesn't really make much difference whether in which portion of the hall you're in. Okay. Uh, what you want to do is, is get an idea of the center line. All right. Either sound out the ceiling joists, whether they're 12, 16, or 24 inches on center. Use your stud finder. All right, or sound them out, one or the other. $11, a lot quicker, all right? Find it, locate it. There's my line, all right? Here's my Phillips head screwdriver with four points that I use a nice hardened one so you can use it as a drill, okay? Find the stud, locate it, take the stick out of the box, you wondered what that was for when you opened it up, right? Put it up through, that tells you approximately where you are. Take the bundle up to the attic. Take a board to work on, a whole lot less expensive, less time consuming than putting a knee or a foot through the ceiling, right? That takes some repair time. Take the board, you'll leave you feel more secure. Going upstairs, what you will need to take with you is the board, the bundled six foot of silver duct, all right? The fan motor, just pick it up by the handle, carry it up, just kind of stretch it across, wait, you're almost there, okay? You've got your template for your plate. There's the edge. There's the center line. Take this center line. Match it to that center line. All right. Mark it. Don't cut it yet. <laughs> take the bundle. Take the motor. You'll need a drill up there for the 7 16 drill bit. I recommend the steel. It's easier on you if it catches a knot or a nail. You're going to drill down through this top plate, which you'll see from the attic.
please don't try to use a spade drill. It's hard on the hands if they catch a knot or a nail. All right. Very quick stop. And when you're using that drill, all right, keep your hands in, or keep your thumbs into your hands. Don't wrap your thumbs around that drill. If it stops, you're going to have sore thumbs for a day or two. You're going upstairs. You're going to leave these down here. You've already marked the template all right, for the intake, all right, the side intake. Right? As you can see, this has got a rope, screws, and a washer somewhere. There you go. That's for throwing it up through the hole to pull the intake up. So you can screw it to the ceiling joists. Okay, uh, we're up there, we're up there. We've taken the motor, we've taken the duct, we've taken the drill, we've taken a battery powered light. If you don't have a light up there, most won't. We know where our 110 source is. Okay. We're going to pull the cover. We're going to need a straight screwdriver. Straight blade screwdriver, a small one, okay, to pull the front cover. When you get back to this outlet, right, clean out before you try to put a Phillips head in there, the four corner Phillips. Right, before you try to put that Phillips head in there, make sure that those threads on the two screws here right, that you're going to pull out, clean them out with the point of a utility knife. If you strip that screw, which is the most inexpensive screw they can make, right, so it's not hardened or anything, and it's small, right, if you strip that screw out, you've just created about another half hour's worth of work using a mini hacksaw, a pair of pliers, whatever, to get that little screw and that little screw out. Take a minute to clean the paint or plaster or whatever it is out of that Phillips head screw. <coughs> you're upstairs. You know approximately where you're at. Correct? Okay. Take the insulation away. Right. So you got a work area. Put your work board down. Put this close. Don't please don't untie this until you get up there. It's a whole lot easier if you untie it. Okay. We get that in a press so that we can cut the shipping cost to you. Okay. It's bulky once you take it out. If you're up there and you should see a convenient junction box, octagonal, square, all right, if you get that lucky and if you got a multimeter to test for voltage up there, do not assume that this is dead because that's dead. All right? This may still have voltage running to it because you don't know where it came from. If you have a multimeter and you can test this, right, because it won't have a plug like this, it'll just be, and you open it up and it's got wires running into it. Probably not a good idea, unless you got a multimeter and then test for voltage. Okay. You're going up, you're up there, you've drilled the hole because you know approximately on the line where you're going to come from. You can't find an outlet in line with the intake plate, the side intake. Right? Just measure back. Right? These are big boxes. They're 16 inches on center, which means they're 14 and a half inches between. Look for the top plate. Two by four is running the way the hall runs. Okay? And I know this is basic, but this is for the basic do-it-yourself right? This is not for guys like me that have done it before. Uh, outlet boxes. You've got two old work boxes that come with the kit and the system. Both of them have been modified. These are the deep boxes which are easier to use. To make it even easier, we've taken these blue plugs out. There's nothing worse than pulling this wire making the mistake of putting that box into this wall and then trying to jam these Romex wires back up and leave this box out here so you can pull the Romex wires. Once the thermostat is installed, you can pull the Romex wires this way 
and then stuff the box in the rectangular hole. That you're going to cut with the old work box template. <laughs> uh, now you can use a utility knife, you can use a keyhole saw. Uh, keyhole saw is the pointy one in case you haven't bought one. Um, I wouldn't unless you do a lot of ceiling work. All right. This is pointy, but these boxes work on a tab that comes up from the back. All right. And they pull into the drywall. A lot of people, when they're cutting the drywall, all right, they're going to jam it. All right. The only problem with the upper right corner, all right, here and here, are where your mounting tabs are that pull it to the back of the drywall. If you break the back of this drywall out, all right, you've got two options, which is why I like this particular old work box. You can screw through the sides and screw it through the stud to mount it, if you goof up. Right. I like the mini hack saws for one reason. Smaller curve, less dust on the ground, less dust on the ground, less dust on the drop cloth that you've already put down to work, right? Smaller curve, easier to control, right? Does take maybe 20 seconds, 10 seconds longer to cut ceiling outlet and the wall outlet. You drill the hole. This is up there, you unwound the 25 foot of cord, kind of straightened it out a little bit. Right? You stuffed this down through this hole about six feet. Gives you plenty of room. You're looking for the stud again, because right? you want to get on the stud. Right? You don't have to, but if you make a mistake, Better to be on the stud because you can screw through it. Mount the old work box to the stud all right, if the drywall gets damaged. All right. If you're finding the stud down here, from up there you've already unwound this 25 foot of wire. Right. You've roughly placed it. As you can see, it doesn't make any difference. This is pre drilled. All right. 12, 16, and 24 inch on center. The screws are in the bag. The silver duct tape is in the bag for connecting the silver duct tape, the intake of the fan, right, and the exhaust portion of the intake plate, which is up here. Right? Template, stud, put it at the convenient thermostat height, mark it. Cut it with the uh, mini hacksaw or the keyhole if you've already got one. Just take care. You're going to pull six foot of wire that you've already got. You're going to now, since this is open, you're going to pull through that outlet. All right? And you can tell you're probably going to end up pulling about 12 or 13 or 14 feet out. We want you to have enough. This is with the installation kit, with the controls, with everything you need to get functional and cool your home efficiently. You're going to push this out here, wire through. All right. I'm not going to disconnect these again because I've done this several times. <laughs> We're getting old. All right. With the thermostat, the cover will be off. You'll take the cover off. As you can see, you've got several connections here. From this connection where you pull this out, excuse me, the old the existing electrical supply box down here. Inside, you're going to see a Phillips head screwdriver and all Phillips head screwdriver. You're going to see a Phillips head screw with a clamp on the other side of it that clamps these wires to this box. Take that clamp out, right. it's going to be a whole lot easier, okay? Because you're going to thread next piece of wire up from the bottom. You're going to cut, you're going to see how far the distance is between here and here. Right. Give yourself an extra two feet, right? 
be generous with yourself. It's just going in the wall. You won't see it anyway. When you've got the two feet, strip them back, all right, five eighths of an inch. You can do it with a utility knife. If you haven't got a set of strippers, all right, you can do it with a utility knife. Cut the insulation back five eighths of an inch. It's pretty much a standard for household wiring. Give this a little bend, right? because remember, you hit the back of the box, and then you're going up in the wall. You're going to have drywall over here. Beat it up through. Right? This is already fed up through, as you can guess. <laughs> but you're going to look down there. You're going to give these a little twist, kind of squeeze them together. Get them through that hole. The reason for the bend is to make it easier on you. <laughs> because as soon as you've got this hole cut out, you're going to reach through, if you can see it, okay, and you're going to grab this, you're going to pull it up. And you're going to hang your foot of wiring out here until you're sure where you're at. Okay. Connect this wire you just fed up through, it's been cut. You're going to take the end of it off again right. with your utility knife. Be a little generous, cut the jacket, cut the jacket and the paper off. You've got the three wires separated bare ground, green grass, ground. The white is common, white goes always to white. Black goes to black, and if the thermostat it's black to red on the thermostat here, as you can see. You've got that, you've got this pulls. Do not mount this box in there yet. Leave it out here where you can work on it. Okay? Now you've got wire coming down from above, you've got power wire coming up through the box. You've already pushed it through the box, openings, right? So you're sitting here. This is sticking out. Now's the time to mount the thermostat. This is very easy. All right. The only other thing you will need is the ground crimp. All right. Like I put saying all right in these videos, I would be a happy camper. Old habit. Twist them. Put them together, white to white. Twist them until both of them, both wires, twist under here. And then you've got a good connection. Black to black. All right. This is the incoming wire. Black to black. Twist them. And in case of the thermostat, it's red also to the black going up. Twist them until they're tight and both wires overlap just beneath the wire, just beneath the wire nut. Green is grass to ground green ground screw on the timer switch, same old, same old, except you've got two blacks, one black to the incoming, one black to the wire from the fan unit, all right? You've got the green to the ground, all right? The only other addition you want to make is a crimp. <laughs> Did I not bring crimps? <laughs> Little copper ground wire crimp. Right. According to code, in most places, you'll find them in the bag. I've already crimped this one. <laughs> the bare ground wire coming up from the source and coming down from the fan motor. Copper ground. Right. Cut one shorter. 
little copper cylinder, slide it over both ground wires. Needle nose pliers, squeeze it tight, and you're done with that portion of it. Take another wire nut, green to the bare wire, twist it, wire nut on the end, till it's tight and the wires are turned. Okay. Give it a little tug. All right, now you've got everything out here. This box is hanging out. Let me loosen this up. see that pop out. Put the little tabs right, will fold down. So you can pull this out. Now you've got that connected. You're connected to the outlet. It's still hanging out of the box. All right. Let it hang out of the box. Go upstairs. This Romex is already connected to the connection box on the fan assembly. Point this. Right? If you know which way the wind is blowing, according to the gable ends, try to put it with the wind. It's just a very small thing, but small things make a better job. Right? This is already upstairs. Pull this out. It's time to mount the intake plate. Pull your ladder that you've been working on over underneath the intake plate. Oh, you've already cut it out. On the intake plate, you'll see there's four holes pre-punched on this Put it up, throw the rope up, drag the ladder under it if you're working alone, and slide it in place on top of the ladder or whatever you have on there. It's got a protective plastic coating on here so you don't scratch it. You know, leave that there currently. Okay. Once it's up there and approximately in place, take the rope out, right, throw the weight up through. Nothing worse than dropping it off top of the ladder when you're up there and it's down here. If you're working alone. I'm going to get that out of the way. Now, within that box, within the baggie here, you will find the five screws. You'll find two shims. Once you're up there, you're going to attach just the top two. You're going to pull it into place with the rope. You're going to attach these top screws to the ceiling joints. <laughs> the reason you're only doing the top two is because now you got to come back down and check to see if this rubber seal and this upper plate, which fits up there, has a nice, flat, good-looking, non-gapped fit. Right? If it doesn't, if your joist is warped a little bit or turned in time, if it's down like this, you want to put the shims right on top of the drywall so that it points it up. Right? If it's up like this, you want to put the shims between the two mounting holes right? so that it points down a little bit. Right? Then set your screws and you're a happy camper. Right? Really? Must be dropped. The screws are all in there. If it's screwed, you need four, there's five screws, you need four here, there's five screws, etc. One other thing, if that's mounted, take the rope out of it. This is mounted, that's mounted. You got electric, a trial connection, you're ready to look. Right. You're ready to connect the duct. Take the silver duct tape out of this bag, right. 
with the screws to mount the fan motor assembly. Let this expand, pull the black liner out. When we use a press occasionally, this will get compressed within the insulation. Reach in, just pull it out. Silver duct tape, I like the silver because it attaches better. The only thing, this to the back of the intake, but when you're taking that little roll out, anchor it on the fan motor first, okay? <laughs> See how sticky it becomes? Exactly. The reason that you anchor it on the fan motor is because it does wrap around itself. All right? I like it, but that's the only fault. If they could make it thicker, I would be in heaven. Rip off the piece. It doesn't have to go all the way around. Wrap the black to the back of the... <laughs> I love you because you're sticky, baby. But anyway, the intake of the fan, you're going to put this over the intake, and you're going to tape it first. Right? Love you because you're sticky, but when it's awkward, it's just awkward. Then you're going to pull, once that's taped all the way around and you got enough for four connections, you're going to pull the silver over, which gives you the insulation between the two. Pull the silver over, duct tape that. Pull it over, you located this so it's, you can U it. Right? The reason for the U up there is it's extra sound deadening. It's like Volvo and European manufacturers uh, do, their, uh, do their exhaust and muffler systems. It's a sound editor. You're taped up, all right, you're ready to do a trial, run back to your circuit box. Don't run, what? Uh, <laughs> back to the circuit box and the fuse panel, turn the power on. Do not touch anything yet, okay? Make sure everything works. Just grab this by the edges, remember it's 110 over here, right. grab it by the edges, turn this to where it turns on. The thermostat, you will hear the click, all right, when initially hits, all right, on the timer, where'd my timer go, all right, you can just hit this upper button and press it until it goes on, all right. That's the complete timer switch, that's the totally on. Or you can hit this, the 60 minute, the 30 minute, the 20 minute. When it goes on, that means all your power is good. Give it a little shake. <laughs> Nothing worse than getting it all stuffed back together and finding out you made a loose connection. Everything's still good. Back down, turn the power off. You're back up here. Now's the time to stuff this into the box. And they are hard wires, they're not stranded wire except for the ground wire. So you literally do have to stuff them into the box. Just bend them and push. Make sure you get them all inside the box. Mount the two screws from the thermostat bag through into the box. Pull this back out if you need to, make it a little more comfy, mount this to the box, almost. <laughs> Pull it back, and you've got it with enough slack by pushing them back up in there, which they've never made it comfy. The hard wire always makes it bad. You got it there, you're good, you grab your Phillips head, wherever I put it. It's easier if you got a little tool pouch or whatever. The attachment screws for the box. Now's the time to tighten those puppies up. You saw this little tab come mounting up. That's I say the keyhole saw, be very careful 
is if you rip the back of this drywall off, you'll have to drill through the side of the box to the stud, which is why I say mount it on the next to the stud. All right. Now that's tightened in. You're in good down there. Take the two screws out through the thermostat cover. Straighten it up so your significant other won't just go, how come it's crooked? Right? <laughs> put this back in, you turn the power off, stuff this back in the wall, put the top plate on, put the cover on here, right? Or the timer, same old, same old. Oh, do make sure that the letters on the thermostat or the timer are up instead of down. You'll feel silly afterwards, then you have to come push the wrong way. Put your top plates back on. You're all ducted. Everything's done there. You've taken this out <laughs> when you cut your when you cut your out when you cut the ceiling out. Uh, you're just about done, other than sweeping up and vacuuming up. Set the thermostat, set the timer, uh, and enjoy the cool. If you have any questions, uh, I tried to go rapidly, uh, but I think you have the idea. Uh, anyone can do this. If you got a fear of electricity, don't. All right. Even if you get the wires crossed, all you're going to do is blow a fuse or blow a circuit breaker. Everything here is thermally protected. All right. You can't move it. All right. Unless you cut your holes too big. And, you know, okay. All right. Any questions, Dane? 770-480-9913 will get an answer on the phone, stmfab.net, right, for STM Fabrication, uh, contact form at the website, uh, any questions, holler at me, I'm not hard to get a hold of. Thank you much, have a good one, and appreciate you coming in.